Hello folks and welcome to another Darktable Landscapes video. In this one we're going to be looking at the light table side of Darktable, the uh, photo organisation side of things. I'm going to be showing you my uh, workflow for this. It's not the only workflow obviously, it's not even necessarily the best workflow, but it's the workflow that works for me uh, and it's relatively close to the workflow I used in Lightroom for many years before switching over to Darktable. So uh, I will show you how I set up Darktable from kind of a fresh start, if you like, this is a fresh installation, and uh, we'll go from there. So to add files to Darktable in the first place, we use the import uh, section up here in the top left, which gives us two main options, add to library and copy and import. Add to library adds files that are already on your hard drive or storage medium to the internal database for Darktable without moving it or copying them anywhere. And copy and import, as the name suggests, actually moves files from one place to another before importing to Darktable's database. So this is the option you would use for importing off an SD card. It's the one I use the most. If you happen to have some photos kind of already floating around in your hard drive that you want to add, then you would use the add to library option. If we drop down uh, this uh, parameters tab here, uh, we can see that we've got a few options that we can apply when we import. And before I import any files, I'm going to change this initial rating to zero for reasons that will become clear shortly. So now we've changed our initial rating to zero, let's actually import something. So we're going to do copy and import. And you can see it takes us to a view where we can see our file structure. And uh, my 32 gig SD card is already selected. That's in my card reader. And in that on that disk is a DCIM folder, and in that DCIM folder is a 101 Fuji folder. Uh, and inside that are all my raw files uh, in date order. And we can select all, we can select none, or we can select new. That's ones that aren't already in the database. So if I select none, and let's say, for example, uh, I want to select everything from the 4th of April and a few from the 5th. So let's say those ones. If we want to kind of view the JPEG preview, we can do that by clicking this little eye. And then down here, we can decide naming rules. It's probably closed by default for you guys, but uh, I've opened it before. So the naming rules are something I change. Uh, first of all, I don't want to import to the pictures folder slash Darktable. I want to put those in photos. You can set the default in the main settings in Darktable up here. And the subdirectory naming pattern by default is today's year, today's month, and today's day underscore job code, which is what it gets from this name here, import job. I'm not a big fan of that system. Uh, I prefer the way Lightroom did it, ironically enough, uh, with just a dated folder. And we can we can do that quite easily just by changing these variables here. And once we've done it once, uh, Darktable will remember. So I remove the job code. I'm not going to use that. Just delete it. And rather than using today's year, today's month, and today's day, I want to use the year, month, and day from the EXIF information. In other words, the date the photo was actually taken. So to do that, all we need to do is add EXIF dot in front of each of those variables, EXIF year, EXIF month, EXIF day. And I don't want to rename my files either. I just want to keep the original uh, file name, the camera assigned to it. So I'm going to click Keep Original File Name. And then I'm going to click Copy and Import. And lo and behold, they all come in. Now, it's given us two film rolls, which are kind of uh, Darktable's basic uh, idea of collections. So we've got the ones from uh, the 5th of April and the ones from the 4th of April in two separate collections. OK. OK, so by default, we're looking at just one of those two dates. If you want to look at all these at once, and we do, you can go to this drop down here where it says by default film roll. And you can go down to the drop down and click import time. And then we've imported it obviously in 2024. I'm recording this in August on the 22nd. And now you can see that all the photos we've imported today are in one view in Lighttable. So that's roughly now just to Lightroom's uh, kind of previous import quick collection. So again, by default, the Lighttable view doesn't give us much information. I prefer to see a bit more information about the images I'm looking at just from this view. So I go up to the star icon up the top here and I change to uh, permanent extended overlays. And then you can see that we get the file name, the file type, 
some of the access information, the rating of the image, which because we set the initial rating here to zero, is zero, and whether or not it's rejected, that's this red cross in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to pop the bottom controls up as well. So this is how we can control how many images are viewed at once. We can drag this slider up, or we can hold control and roll the mouse wheel. And rolling the mouse wheel just scrolls normally. So let's get a few more in place. And now we can begin our culling process. So culling, if you're not familiar with it, is essentially removing any photos that we're pretty sure we're not going to be able to make use of, out of focus, drastically overexposed, motion blur, anything that's pretty much unusual, uh, unusable, sorry, we're going to get rid of. Uh, and then we can go through and make further fine tuning passes to rate our photos until we get down to a set of photos that we can begin processing with confidence. So the first thing I'm going to do is control and roll my mouse wheel until I can only see one photo. And then I will begin to cull. So the two keys I'm going to make use of are the R key for reject and the one key to give the image a one star rating. And before I do that, I'm going to go up to uh, the top corner here where the filter bar is. And I'm going to filter for unrated images, so not rated, which is essentially at the moment all my images. OK, so all my images at the moment are unrated, so I can see them all. I can use the arrows, arrow keys to go kind of through them if I want to. Um, let's go back through. There we go. So there's our first image. And what will happen is as soon as I either reject or rate these images with either a one star or a reject, they will no longer fall under that uh, not rated filter and will automatically go to the next photo in the list. So it's a bit like having caps lock on in Lightroom, the auto advance feature, uh, slightly simpler. So we're just essentially moving photos out of this not rated filter. So let's do that now relatively quickly. So that's not a bad one. I'll call that one a keeper. That's not so good. We'll reject, reject. We've got a blur in the corner here from someone's phone. Uh, reject, reject. That's not a bad one. Reject, reject, reject. I was rather caught by surprise by these guys marching through Copenhagen. The uh, the Royal Guard. Apparently they do it every day. Uh, so keeper, mm, not so good. That's a one. And I'm being fairly uh, kind of broad here because it's not, uh, I'm not going super into super detail about the actual shots, just whether it's a complete reject or maybe something we can do with it. So uh, that's a keeper. Maybe that's a keeper with some processing. Uh, that's probably a bit too far away. Keep that one. And uh, we'll keep that one. Might as well reject that one. Reject. Uh, reject. Angle slightly better on that, so we'll keep that one and we'll reject that one. So we've got to the end of our, our collection here and we're still on not rated. So nothing is being displayed. So now what we need to do is get rid of our rejects. And the way we do that is simply by clicking the filter again to show rejected. OK, so we'll zoom back out and we'll zoom back out on our display. So now we can see that all these photos are all the rejected ones. And then we can either use Control A or we can click up here in the top right, select all. And then we can uh, drop this actions on selection section down. And then we have two options. We can click remove which leaves the photos on the hard drive, but takes them out of Darktable's database, or we can delete to our system's trash bin. So I'm going to delete and trash. I don't want them anymore taking up space on my SSD. So away they go. So now we can just look at our selected. So we've got one star images here. So we can either click the one star, or in fact, we can click and drag across all the ratings, and that will show all our images regardless of rating. OK, so the next step is a kind of a fine tuning pass where we can rate our images according to how kind of eager we are to process them, if you like, how good they are in our opinion. So I'm going to zoom back into uh, my image so I can see one at a time. And my system is essentially two stars is OK, three stars is good, four stars is excellent, five stars is landscape photographer, photographer of the year territory, which is a relatively unused rating in my book. Um, so let's go through these and see what we can do. So I'd say this is probably a two. So I'm going to just hit the number two. And then to go to the next image, I'm just going to hit the right arrow. Yeah, that's probably 
probably a one on on reflection which probably means i'll get rid of it with another pass let's call that a two um okay that's mm, possibly a two maybe a nice black and white that's a two 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 and let's call that a three for argument's sake and that a three for argument's sake and then we can roll back so now we can filter these further so if i only want to see the ones yeah that's a one i can probably just delete that one again way it goes i can see the twos by clicking and dragging two stars and i can see the threes by clicking and dragging three stars or i can see them all by clicking and dragging them all if you wanted to, you could you could further refine this. So we've given them ratings, but you could also do things like assign colors. So for example, uh, you might select all the images of architecture and assign them, say, a red label and all the uh, photos of people and give them, say, a green label. And then you can further kind of filter by them. Uh, that's looking for kind of both green and red. That's just looking for green. That's just looking for red. And that's showing everything. So that's an option. Uh, but we can do things a little bit more kind of human readable, if you like, without having to remember what color we assign, what category by using tags. And this is, in fact, how I kind of replicate Lightroom's named collection system. So on the right hand side of the light table view, we've got the tagging section. And that allows us to uh, add tags and also set tags as categories, which is very handy. Uh, so I'll show you how I use that to make collections. I've obviously got no tags here because, as I said, this is a fresh installation, but eventually you'll build up a library of tags uh, that you can apply readily to any image you import. Uh, but this is the process from, from scratch. So this is obviously travel photos. I took this one on a little trip to Copenhagen, a lovely spot. I'd love to go back. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a travel tag. OK. And I'm going to click new down the bottom there. And before I go on, I'm going to right click. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to set this as a category. So I'll click save and you can see how this has now gone italic to designate it to a uh, category. And I can right click this category and I can click create tag, which creates it nested inside the uh, travel category. And obviously Copenhagen is in Denmark, so I'm going to call it Denmark. And I'm just going to click edit and make this a category as well. And by default, we've got this kind of pipe view where the Denmark kind of subcategory is designated by a pipe character here. Um, but I prefer a tree view. So you can do that by clicking that little icon down the very bottom right hand corner. And now we've got a tree view of, of the tags, which kind of makes more sense to me. And now, so we've got travel Denmark, obviously for every country we visit, if we're lucky, we'd have a separate category tag. And then inside here, I'm going to create another tag and I'm going to call this Copenhagen. And you can set it to category at this point. I just kind of forgot before, so here is human. So we'll click save. And now we've got a category called Copenhagen. Okay, so now I'm going to select all my images. I can do it with this button or I can click control A. I've got the Copenhagen tag selected down the bottom right and I can click attach. And now all these images have the Copenhagen tag attached. Now I could, if I wanted to create a separate section of tags, maybe kind of a category and then make categories inside there, for example, architecture, people, graffiti, boats, and I could tag those further. You can have multiple tags in multiple different categories uh, and that will allow you to refine things to the nth degree. Uh, you can be as detailed or as broad as you like, obviously. And now we can view a collection of, for example, Copenhagen photos by going over to our collections side again, the collections panel here, and where we set it originally to import time so we could see all the photos we imported today. I'm going to drop that down. And I'm going to choose tag. So now we've got a few options. We've got Darktable's kind of native tag which is the file format so all the RAF files which is Fuji raw we have not tagged which in this case is nothing because we just tagged all the images we've got and then we have our category our country and our main tag okay so you can see that this is a very powerful in terms of organization you essentially have a filing system for all your photos so uh, let's just go through the process again quickly to uh, kind of really nail it home. 
So I'm going to go to copy and import again. I'm still on initial rating zero. Back on my card. I'm going to scroll to the bottom here because I know that on this card I went to Hadrian's Wall in Northumberland in England on the 29th of July. And I'm going to select all the photos from then. Just by hold, clicking the bottom, holding shift and clicking the top and vice versa. So remember that I still want exif year, exif month and exif day as my uh, folder name. And I'm keeping the original file name. So I'm going to copy and import. Now it's importing away. Okay, so we finished the import and I'm just going to remain in the, in the film roll collection here because it's only one day's worth of photos, which is more likely that you'll be importing one day at a time. But, you know, I've given you the workflow for multiple days if you want it. And uh, we can zoom in a bit. Now, I normally go for one photo at a time, but there's nothing stopping you just kind of keeping maybe two. Um, and then you can see the next photo in line. So if you're not quite sure uh, if you prefer one photo over the other, you can kind of see the previous ones as well. So as before, we're going to click not rated in our filter, which is all the photos at the moment. And then we'll start rejecting and one starring. So uh, that's not bad. This one is very similar. So I'm going to reject. I'll re reject the other two as well. Then we get to these ones. That's pretty good. That's more or less identical. So we'll reject that one. We'll reject that one. Uh, maybe that one. And then obviously an HDR bracket there. So I'll just reject these. I don't think I particularly need it. And I'll carry on going and I'll fast forward because you don't need to see me just clicking photos through. Okay, so we've gone through all our photos. We've rated them all either reject or one. And I'm going to find all my rejects. There they are. Select all and trash. And then we can view our one stars or just all our photos. And then we can go through them again and select which ones we want. We could maybe color label the ones that we know are for HDR bracketing. That can be handy sometimes. Uh, so for now, I'm not going to bother kind of fine tuning the ratings. You know the process for that, but we'll go for some tagging. So I'm, obviously these aren't travel. These are more landscape. So I'm going to make a landscape category. Click new, right click, edit and call it a category. And then I will create another tag, a sub tag of that. And I'm going to call this England because it's in England. Make that a category save and then now I will do create tag again Northumberland I could equally as well call it Hadrian's Wall that's mainly where I go if I go to Northumberland save okay and then finally now that we're in the Northumberland category we can like at the final the final tag if you like so another new tag create tag and this is at Caulfield's quarry It's not a category, it's just the actual location. Okay, so landscapes, England, Northumberland, Caulfield's Quarry. And if I went to, I don't know, Housesteads Roman Fort, then I could make another tag called Housesteads. And away we go. So let's select all the images again and attach that tag. And now we can go back across to our collections panel, go to tag, and there are our categories are landscape, England, Northumberland, Caulfield's Quarry. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The, the beauty of this system is even if you're a relatively mature kind of library of photos with files and folders all over the place, you can apply this tagging strategy to any of them. Uh, obviously, it will take you some time to tag every image you've got. But once you've done that, you have the full power of that categorization system at hand. Uh, and you can more or less ignore the actual physical location on your storage medium and just make use of the tagged collections to uh, find the photos you want to find when you want to find them. So I hope you find this one useful. Uh, do like, comment and subscribe if you've got any, uh, any further tips that you use to organise your photos. Uh, otherwise, I will catch you on the next one.